Brakate Yahawa, Brakate Yahawa Shai, Kal Halayam La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Brakha Kodash, which means all praises to Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Barcha HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, on the way we worship the Father and the Son. Daba Anas, to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. It's Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp, the Branch on Des Moines. And um, what you see here on your screen, this is a, a lesson from the Brother Yakal and the Brother Barak, you know, that they did earlier today. It says great persecution and demonization is coming, you know, and um, watch a couple minutes as you can see I'm four minutes in, you know, but uh, I was also, you know, there while they were filming. So I heard, you know, a little bit of it, you know, in person, you know, and the brothers was going into preparing ourselves for the for the, the persecution and the demonization to come, you know, and um, how these things are written, you know, but I want to go into the aspect of, yeah, these things are coming. And these things are written as prophecy, but it's also prophesied that the Lord is going to deliver us out of it, you know, because this devil is not going to have his way with us like how he did during the time of Greece, during the time of the Romans, you know, because great wrath was upon us during those times. Now we are being recon we have been reconciled back to the heavenly father through the blood of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, so. These are just thoughts that I had, you know, while I was listening to these brothers speaking and um, certain precepts popped in my mind, but, you know. Certain things took place and, you know, I'm just now able to, <laughs> you know, so I'm going through the spirit on this. Lord, well, I hope it's edifying and I pray that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai through the Holy Spirit bring those particular precepts back to my mind. You know, so I'm just going to spirit and it's spiritual, man. You know, uh, the Des Moines channel, you can see right there, 144K, you know, that 144,000, man, that governing body that the Lord is building, you know. And of course, you know, uh, the rest of the believers that's following behind them, according to Revelation, the seventh chapter, you know, because some will have to matter of fact, let's get this in the book of Revelation. Let's start here. Let's start here in the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, because it's written, not the 19th chapter, I'm sorry, the 20th chapter, because it's written that some of us will have to, you know, lay down our lives, but we already laying down our lives now. You know, and if we're doing it now on a daily basis, man, you know, denying ourselves and doing what's right in the sight of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, then, then the Most High through the through His only begotten Son, our Lord Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit, He will fill us with courageous spirits, man, to die courageously, right? As it is written in the book of Maccabees, man, and Lord will, we can get that. Now, this is the book of Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shah and for the word of the Most High in which had, in which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither his had received his M-A-R-K upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah a thousand years, man. So reading this, we can see the devil actually going to get his hands on some of us, man. And, and he's actually going to, you know, put some of us to death. You know, it's also written in um, Revelation. I hate when I have a, you know, brain freeze, man. You know. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days, which goes into you know a certain amount of time. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You know, so we don't know what our our our, our role is within the Lord's movie. We might have to taste death, you know, and this is why the scriptures tell us. To prepare our minds for it, man. Uh, this is Sirach. This is six. Oh, it's four. Four and thirty-seven. Hmm. Yep. That's why the search engine is becoming my best friend. <laughs> I used to know these, you know, by heart. 4 and 28. Why, why did I have 37 in my brain? So rock 4 and 28. Strive for the truth unto death and the Lord shall fight for thee, man. You know, so the Lord is going to fight for us, man. And keep in mind, right? If we do have to, 
you know, shed this flesh, which at the end of the day, we all have to shed this flesh anyway, you know, one way or another. But if we do have to, you know, slit, slit, if we do have to shed this flesh, keep in mind <clears throat> that this is written. This is the book of Second Maccabees 7. And I'll start at 34. It says, but thou, O godless man, right? Now, this is talking about Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth. You know, but this could be applied to the, the 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 wickedness of Esau that he's going to do today. But thou, O godless man, and, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of the Most High. For thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty Power, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under the most highest covenant of everlasting life. Didn't we read that in Revelation 20? How they were beheaded, but then they lived and reigned with Yahweh Shah for a thousand years, man. You see? And that and they ain't talking about they're gonna die after that thousand years. No. You know, because that is going into, you know, that thousand year uh, uh punishment of the heathen, man. You see. Because the rulership is forever. It says that the throne of David endureth to all generations, man. And yet, Hawashia is sitting upon it and, and King David underneath him. You see? So when it says a thousand years, it's just talking about that time period to where we're going to uh, execute vengeance, payback, revenge upon the heathen, starting with Esau, Edom. But it says, are dead under the Most High's covenant of everlasting life, but thou... Through the judgment of the Most High shall receive just punishment for thy pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life, right, for the laws of all fathers, beseeching the Most High that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou by torments and plagues mayest confess that he alone is the Most High. And that's exactly what happened to this devil. By plagues and torments, he confessed that the Most High is the true power, man. And it's the same thing that's going to take place with these uh, uh, heathen star when Esau eat them today through plagues and torments, man. <clears throat> and that's going to come in, in, in the kingdom of heaven. You know, that's going to come in the kingdom of heaven when what the mercy of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is going to be shed abroad unto all our nation. Verse 38, and that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the almighty, which is justly brought upon our nation may cease. Yeah, and that's that, that's it. You know, we could continue to read down, but it talks about how he took that last son, you know, and, and did him worse than than all the rest of them. You know, but look at the the manliness, look at the courage that these men had within themselves, man. And that's all from Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah through the Holy Spirit, because they believed in the words that was given unto them, and it's the same words that we have today. You know, so some of us might have to face that, man. Right. And I'm reading these things to show forth that, look, we, we might have to face it, but we could face it with courage. <laughs> you see, because we'll be back. <clears throat> we will be back. It tells us in the book of uh, First Thessalonians. This is the book of First Thessalonians. Chapter four, and I get straight to the point. Verse 14, for if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, which means died, even so them also which died in Yahweh will the Most High bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, you see, so there are men who are still going to be alive, man. <laughs> right? It says, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall ascend with heaven. I'm sorry. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And those that are alive, that's when they shed that flesh, man. So we all going to have to shed this flesh one way or another. Like I said, it says to meet the Lord in the air 
and, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, man, because death is not the end. It tells us here. It's Proverbs 12 and 28 in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof, there is no death, man. So that's an honorable thing. The Lord said precious in his sight. Let's get that. You know, and if this hat and if this is our fate. Then may how about Sham Yahweh allow these particular precepts to come into our minds, man, and strengthen our hearts in those moments, man. This is the book of Psalms 116 and 15. Precious in the sight of Yahweh Basham Yahweh is the death of his saints, man. You see? So that's an honorable thing. You know? But what inspired me to do this lesson, this ain't 70 AD, man. This ain't the time of Greece. <laughs> you see? You know, um, we had our class yesterday, our, our, our midweek class, and um, the spirit was on me. You know, I, I had recently uh, watched uh, Paul, the Apostle of Christ. That's what the title of the movie is. And um, yesterday, you know, I had the brothers watch it. You know, I had watched it again and I had watched it with the brothers, you know, and um, it's heavy, you know, that the spirit had me watch that particular movie, man, because you had the persecution, you know, Nero blamed uh, Jake, you know, it, he blamed the Israelites for the for the burning down, uh, have half of Rome burning down, you know, and that justified him bringing forth the persecution. They call it Nero Circus. You know, he was he was throwing our people that believed in Yahweh Shah. He was throwing our people into the uh, the Colosseum. You know, they were being torn, torn apart by tigers and lions and, you know, vicious animals, man. You know, he was uh, using he was burning them in the streets, you know, to light the uh, uh, light the streets. You know, that movie showed you, you know, I encourage brothers, if you haven't watched that movie, man, to watch it. And then you had certain guys, you know, who wanted to take vengeance into their own hands, man. And it's the same thing we're seeing today. You know, there's no new thing under the sun, like the scripture says, you know, but I want to speak on how this ain't 70 AD, you know, and what Nero was doing was actually before 70 AD, right? That persecution that was upon the believers of our Lord Yahweh Shah all the way up until the point of 70 AD. And even after that, you know, but this is not that time, man, <laughs> you know, because the Lord, the Lord said, let's get this in the book of Isaiah. The Lord said. That when this devil will come in, this is the book of Isaiah 59 in verse 19. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, right? And that flood is talking about the flood of ungodly men. Let's prove that. Psalm, uh, Psalms. It is Psalms, but uh, 2 Samuel 22 and 5, when the ways of death can pass me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. Psalms 18 and 4, the sorrows of death can pass me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. You see? So it says when the enemy, when the ungodly men, just like how Antiochus had called him, what, godless, you see? Ungodly and godless synonymous is saying the same thing. So when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah shall lift up a standard against him, man. You see, so this time around, in this time that we in, the Lord is going to lift the standard this time, man. You see, because he lifted a standard back then, but it was in the form of us fleeing. This is Revelation 12 and 15 and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood that's those armies the flood of ungodly men after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood another precept to show that that flood is talking about armies this is the book of uh isaiah 17 <laughs> Or is it Ezekiel 17? Uh, let's see. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah. Isaiah 17 and 12. Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. You see that flood. The nation shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but the most I shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind, man. So that's that standard that the Lord is going to lift, man. But going back to Revelation 70 AD, what did the Lord do when those armies came in? Verse 16, Revelation 12 and 16, and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of her mouth. So now what happened here during this time is that the Lord allowed us to flee. You see, we fled like Yahweh Shah told us. When you see the abomination of desolation stand in a, a holy place, flee ye to the mountains, right? So the Lord allowed us to flee and allowed us to escape in order for more prophecy to be fulfilled because we fled into the wilderness which the wilderness represents Africa mainly, you know, the wilderness is technically the whole world, you know, the field, no, the field is the whole world, I'm sorry, because it speaks about it in the book of Micah, let me, let me, let me verify, you know, um, correct that, Salaki, not verify, let me correct that, the field is the world, you know, the wilderness is, uh, uh, Africa, um, dwell field, it's in the book of Micah, This is the book of uh, Micah 4 and 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Right? We was fled out of Jerusalem. And thou shalt dwell in the field. We were scattered to the four corners of the earth. But also, going back to the Revelation 12, we fled into the wilderness, which is Africa. Right? And thou shalt go even to Babylon. And we already know the story. When we was put on those slave ships, we was gathered up. Right? There shall thou be delivered. There Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall redeem thee from the hand of thy enemies, man. And there's where we're going to be persecuted. There's where the demonization is going to come. And the Lord is going to deliver us from it. That's what's going to make this, this deliverance great, man. You know, we gotta be we gotta be in the trouble in order for us to be delivered out of it. <laughs> That's that Jeremiah. You know, it's the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, man. You know, so as we prepare in our mind to face these things. Also, the salvation to come behind it, man. You see? But see, during this time, the Lord allowed us to, to flee and escape, you know, into uh, uh, the places that we were, you know, that we ran to. But see, the Lord, according to the prophecy, said that this time. This is the book of Isaiah 52 and 12. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. Right? Now, we apply this to say, oh, we ain't going to get no plane tickets and get out of here, which, you know, that's true. We're not. We will be delivered from the, by the chariot to the Lord. But also, you see this word flight means retreat or fleeing. That's what we did during, you know, the persecution in Rome. We fled. You see? But our salvation out of here, we're not going to flee. For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For Yahweh Basham Yahweh will go before you, and the power of Israel will be your reward, man. Which is talking about our defense in the back. So he's in the front of us, and he's behind us, man. Meaning he's going to protect us this go round. You see, so that's the Lord lifting up that standard, man. He's lifting up that standard for who? Verse 20, back in Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. So this is who our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming for. Those who are walking in the innocency of the spirit, man. Not those who are trying to pull up. Pull up, boys. <laughs> you know, nigga, toddlers were pull ups, nigga. Pull up, boys, Right. No, but those that keep themselves blameless, man. You see, it talks about how Daniel was delivered from the uh, uh, the lion's den because of his innocency. He that have clean hands shall wax stronger and stronger. So as long as we continue to move in the spirit, man, in the, in, in the precepts and in the doctrine that we have been taught, we will be straight. The Lord will deliver us. He will lift that standard up, man. 
That's why I go into the 49th chapter. Matter of fact, the 50th chapter. This is Isaiah 50 and 7. For Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, I started six. It says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Now, this going into our Lord Yahweh Shai and what he went through. But also, the servant is not greater than his master. So we're going to go through these same things, man. Verse 7. For the Lord power Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai will help me. You see? Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me, man. So <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, uh, the first rush hour, man, with um, uh, Sue Young. You know, push, push the button. Push, push the goddamn button. You know? So my nigga, do what you do, dog. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is going to lift that standard, man. Whatever that standard may be. You know, when the armies came in uh, to try to get Elisha, what did the Lord do? He allowed Elisha to smite them with, 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 with blindness, man. Elijah called down fire from heaven. You see? See all these different, you know, scenarios that we could read about how the Lord can deliver, man. You know? So however the Lord is going to do it, man, it's going to be miraculous, man. He will lift that standard. We shall not be confounded, man. Those that put their trust in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, verse 9. Behold, the Lord power will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up, man. You see? Let's jump over to the 51st chapter. Isaiah 51. And um, I started nine. It says, "Awake, awake! Put on strength, O arm." Talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai of Yahweh. Awake, as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Is going into Egypt. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, when you look up Rahab, emblematic, an emblematic name of Egypt. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, the Lord said it shall no longer be said that the Lord delivered us from Egypt, but that the Lord delivered us from the land of the north, man. You see? So our Lord, Yahweh Shah, just like how he did back then, it says that the word of the Lord, right? Let's get that. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Bro. Oh, because I'm looking in Ecclesiasticus. I'm tweaking. Salakia. Uh, this is the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon. 18 and 15. Thy almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne. And who was the word? Revelation the 19th chapter. He had a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of the most high. John, the first chapter, the word was made flesh. So some of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, thy almighty word leaped down from heaven out of thy royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of a land of destruction. And brought thy unfeigned commandment as a sharp sword and standing up filled all things with death and it touched the heaven, but it stood upon the earth, man, you see. So just like our Lord Yahweh Shah came and defeated us back then, how he killed all the firstborn of Egypt. What it says in Isaiah, the 66 chapter, the slain of the Lord shall be many from one end of the earth to the other. So the Lord is going to come do the same thing in this modern day Egypt, a.k.a. America. Let's go back. Isaiah 51 and 9. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of Yahweh. Awake as in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Art thou not it that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? Is not the Lord going to wound this dragon again? Revelation, the 12th chapter, Revelation, the 13th chapter. You see this whore that rotted the beast, man, it's all going down. It says, verse 10, art thou not it which hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? How the Lord, what split the, uh, you know, the, um, uh, is it, uh, Akba or Suez? Man, I always get it, get it, get them, get them mixed up, you know, but the one, the one on the east. 
you know, the one on the west. It was the one on the west, the one farther, farthest west, you know. Man, I'm all, I always get it mixed up, man. But it says, verse 11, Therefore the redeemed of Yahweh shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. You see, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing, man. So let us keep this joy before us. In Hebrews 12, it says that for the joy that was set before our Lord Yahweh Shai, he endured the cross, despised the shame, right? And sat down uh, next to the heavenly father in the heavens. I'm roughly paraphrasing this Hebrews, the 12th chapter. I believe it's the second or third verse. We have to keep this same joy before us, man. And this is what, this what will allow us to face death if we have to, to go through all this persecution and demonization that we're going to have to face, man. It says, wrath endureth only for a, a moment. Matter of fact, let me grab that. Because it says, sorrow shall flee away. Psalms 30 and 5, for his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, man. You see, our Lord is on his way, man. Back in Isaiah 51 and 12, I, even I am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die and of the son of man, which shall be made as grass and forget us. Yeah. How about Shem Yahweh thy maker? You see, we can't forget the Lord, man, to hell with this devil and what he got planned. It says that have stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has fear continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor, man? You hear that, man? <laughs> Lord said, you scared of this demonization and prosecute, you know, persecution, man, as if he was ready to destroy. And where is he? So the Lord will defend us, man. And we've just got to do our part, remain blameless. You know, let's continue to move in the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and these precepts and the doctrine that's been delivered unto us, right, by his holy apostles and prophets, as it is written in the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter, that we will keep these things, and, you know, uh, in the forefront of our minds. So, Lord will, I hope this was out of fine. Tawadi Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone and peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And before I close out, because you know it's 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 bothering, it's irking my spirit. <laughs> you know, we just you know, we want to be on point as possible. You know, make sure what we're saying and what we're explaining, you know, is 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 all you know right. Um I'm going to just type in Suez. As you can see. Come on, bro. But this is beautiful. It was right here. On the left side. That's where we crossed. Over there on the left. Which. That is, in fact, Suez. Yep. See, that's the spirit. So I wanted to make sure, you know, I, I I spoke correctly on that. And um, since the spirit had me make sure and verify that there were certain things I was looking up while those brothers was doing those lessons. You know, and these are certain things that uh that Esau got on the books because the brothers read in the book of um Esther, you know, when uh Haman Hoaz went to the king and it put an into writing to, uh, to destroy our people. You know, that was written into the law during that Persian kingdom, man. And these are things that's written, you know, in law here in America. So now this is the Rex 84 plan, as you can see. It says, was a classified scenario and drill developed by the United States federal government to detain large numbers of United States residents deemed to be national security threats, right? Domestic tease, right? In the event that the president declared a national emergency, the scenario envisioned state defense forces rounding up 500,000 undocumented Central American residents. Hmm. It's not a lot of Central, you know, our people pouring in, you know, undocumented. It's not America allowing them to come in. 
and 4,000 American citizens whom the U.S. Attorney General had designated as national security threats as part of the secret continuity of government program. Man, these people will be detained at 22 military bases in concentration camps. Great Millstone been prophesying about that, man, for years, man, run by the Federal Emergency Management Act, FEMA. <laughs> you see? You know, so this this is all on the books, man. Rex 84, as you can see. And there was another one called, you know, the King Alfred plan, which I remember back then when the apostles was bringing it out, man. You know, it didn't it didn't say all this. Esau added all this, man. It says is a fictional. You see, now they're trying to say that it's fake. <laughs> you know, which these things is actually these things were are real, man. But it tells us here this bullshit is fictional CIA led scheme supporting an international international effort to eliminate people of Israelite descent. It ain't African. It's Israelite descent, man. You know, it says Williams described it as a government plan to deal with the threat of a black, quote unquote, the black Hebrew Israelites, right? A black uprising in the United States by cordoning off black people into concentration camps in the event of a major racial incident. And what's happening with the, the, the Palestinians and the pull up boys? <laughs> you see, so we see this devil, man. We are not ignorant of your devices, man. You know, so we can see this devil, you know, he, 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 he's, he's putting, laying down a blueprint, but look, it's all according to prophecy. And the Lord warned us that these things would happen, that these things would take place. And guess what, my nigga, push the mother effing button, dog. Because Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah is with us, man. As we read in Isaiah 50 and in Isaiah 51, the Lord is with us, man. So do your worst, devil. And Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah will recompense you, man. So Lord will, I hope this was out of fine, Shalom.